birthday to you. Happy birthday to you. Happy birthday, Hollywood. Hey, happy birthday to you. Thank Man, you. Three quarters of a century on this planet, Terry. Oof. That's, okay. a, that's a long time. Yeah, it is for yeah. sure. I don't know where all the years went. <laughs> yeah, I don't know either. Bob Singer, Bob Seeger sings it in a song, and every time he says it, 30 years, man. Where'd they go? 30 years, man. I don't know. And I have to say, I think he says 20 years, but I I I, I adjust it to fit me, right? Because everything is about me. <laughs> so I always say 40 years, man, where'd they go? Uh, because sure as hell it goes by fast, no? It does, absolutely. In the blink of an eye, or as it says, as you know, life is but the morning dew. So we should enjoy it while we're here. And one of the things we try to do is enjoy our time here with you at Horse Racing today. So follow us on our social sites down there below. If you haven't done so on the uh, YouTube channel, kindly hit the subscribe button. I think we're about 70 people away. Oh, wow. There's 70 people who tune in today that haven't subscribed yet that should head over to Horse Racing Red Art TV. Uh, look us up on YouTube. Subscribe. Get us to five grand so that we have something else to celebrate tomorrow. When we're at uh, Golf Street Park, Terry and I, on four and Friday, Tom and I will return. We'll do Randwick. Um, yesterday, Terry, pretty interesting day. We had some winners. Nice little pick four in the middle there. And you don't know, realize between you and me, how we're like one horse away in four races from hitting every pick four so far this week at one of us, every pick four so far this week at Parks. Yeah, I do. Yeah, so let's see if today, since it's your birthday, that means Christopher D'Souza, no matter what, you have to pick a horse you think stinks the most today in your matchup with Terry. So Terry wins, and, of course, all of his pick fours and best bets must win. We're going to try that. Uh, we're going we're, we're gonna to see if the horse racing – I don't, I don't want to call them gods, but the, the horse racing whatevers <laughs> – Decide to go ahead and play that route with you, Terry, today. So get us started and see if, Maya, you got some, some luckiness in your basket today. All right. Well, this first race is a mile race, and it's an optional claiming race. So $25,000 claiming price if you'd like to put your horse in here to possibly be tra uh, claimed. And then the purse is $26,000 for three-year-olds and upwards, which have started for $25,000 or less, which have never won two races, or a claiming price of $25,000 or never won two races. Yeah, the first two races, I think, are at a mile. I don't know if there's any more than that. But profile of a winner, you know, you want to be middle forward, though, if you're on the lead, it's helpful, too, because 42% of the time, the horse that is on the lead stays on the lead all the way to the finish line. Pretty strong rail for run and score. Probably a good chance that it might do that today. Two through seven, get a little bit of a discount. Really, the best place to be is wearing eight or out. In race number one, 10,000 simulations. We're looking for simulation odds where we uh, we project our speed figures. Whichever horse obviously gets the highest speed figure would have won that race. And then we figure out the odds from there. We want our simulated odds to be lower than the post-time odds. Based upon those projected speed figures, how many times it is at par or better. So par plus, that being a speed figure of 85 in this case, in this opener, as I kind of went over that a little bit. We also calculate 10,000 first races to the quarter mile marker. See who's going to be the fastest and have the best chance to get there. And then based upon that projected pace, how likely the horse is to be in its comfort zone to match or mirror its best performances. The higher the number, the better. Terry, when the gates open, it looks like the one on the rail will be flying. That's true. They've all shown some speed, but that one has the most followed up by the five. And then the one has a small, really small overlay, like two and a quarter of one to two and a half to one. The three has a, a overlay from about almost three to one to five to one. And the seven has an overlay from two to one to seventy two. They all, uh, the seven, one, and three show the only par plus numbers, and they all show some kind of C zones. Yeah, we're looking for comfort zones, usually above 50. So I would like to see that one horse here with a strong C zone, may or may not like being on the lead. Let's yeah. take a look at the trip handicapping where horses have shown they've run their best. The one horse and the six show they want to be up on the lead. Are either one of them going to be there? Indeed, they'll both likely be there, although. 
The one has about a three quarter length over everybody else and the inside edge to get to the turn first. So that should favor the one. At the end of the race, when they're coming home, it does look like Dan Sedini, the closer, will be coming the strongest and actually a little bit ahead of Carnivore there, too. So might get a little bit of a jump on that one. Our top total pace horse in this race is the three horse Dance Adini. You got about five of them here that grade out in the top four. So maybe you can cross off the two and the four in this race, Terry. And more than 70% of the time, the winner will come from this group. You have one of those in that group at the top of your list. I do. That seven horse carnivore is my top choice. Finished second versus similar in his last race. Best dirt speed as fast as among today's starters. He's got a high percentage winning jockey and trainer. Run and score. The one is my second choice. For, finished third versus similar in his last race. Post is winning at a 22% clip. And he has an early foot. So this shorter distance may help. Traffic master of the two is my third choice. Uh, finished it to a high percentage winning trainer. Uh, I'm sorry, fish switches to who trains 32%, uh, who wins 32% of the races after claiming a horse, switches a high percentage winning jockey. And this combination of the last uh, 14 days have been in the money. Seven out of 10 starts with four wins. And then the four Gucci men is my long shot. He can improve while returning to a route and he has a high percentage winning trainer. Uh, I'm going to make, we've got our normal bets each race. We bet uh, $2 to win on the, on the first choice, a $1 exact box on the first two, a 50 cent trifecta box on the first three choices, and then a 10 cent superfecta box on the first four choices. So no additional bets other than that for me. Yeah, we don't have a whole lot of extra money today with 11 races. I'm going to go with the run and score. It was a tough call for me over a seven horse, but you have that big time rail advantage going to be on the lead. That's the place to be. And all of the race internals were better last out. And to continue on that trend, the horse has a nice workout between races. Carnivore, Terry's horse, our simulation favorite in here, ran much better fractions last time out and did so with much better early pace. So you're going to see that horse giddy up and go too. Number three, Dance uh, Denny. Is our top total pace horse. We saw that. Also, one of those horses that ran better fractions, too, but it ran better fractions at a mile and 70 yards than it did the race before at seven furlongs, and now cutting back a little bit of distance. So go forward, take a half a step back, and maybe that's the winning recipe. The gatekeeper, the six horse is my long shot, Mr. Terry. Absolutely the most back class in this, for this horse. And the last time out, the horse ran at parks for the first time. Really no idea what happened there. Two decent workouts between says maybe can rewind back to some of that top, that class. Race number two, as we got, I think, about 10 minutes before the first race kicks off, Terry. So let's see if we can work our way through a couple of races before uh, the first one gets started. All right. First, I want to say uh, thank you very much, Don Johnson, for the happy birthday wishes. And hope we both do well today. But uh, but race two is another mile race. It's a but it would be a great birthday gift from you to me, Terry. If I did better, yeah, <laughs> yeah. Mag magnanimous of you on hump day for him. But anyway, go ahead. Yeah, that's true. Anyway, this is a maiden claiming race. Ten thousand dollar claiming price. First nineteen thousand for maidens. Three year olds. Three year olds. That's it. That's it. Pretty simple, right there. We talked about a mile really benefiting horses that have early speed. That is the way to the winner circle. Uh, profile of the winner at the Ben Salem track. 42% of the time, the rail utility gets a good edge. Two through seven, a little bit discount. Eight now is the best. Again, Terry, a bunch of simulations to give us a sense of what to expect when the race gets going. Yeah, I'll, I'll, several of these have, uh, you know, some speed, but that seven, one, and four show the most speed. So it's really anyone's guess who's going to get there. The first, uh, the number one horse has an overlay from four to five to two to one, and that's about the only one I see. None of them have any par plus numbers, and all but the one and seven show some kind of C zones, although some of them are kind of small. Yeah, and our trip handicapping, look at that. the two, four, five, six, and seven have not been within five lengths of the winner at the finish line as of yet. The only one that's been remotely close to the winner is the one, Utility. Uh, let's see. In this race, a lot of times speed will get the job done, and love is forever. Oh, what is it? That one should have a pretty good aggressive advantage over early everybody early, so keep an eye on that one. Uh, that late pace will have to pick up there. 
at the end of the race, however, utility will be coming pretty aggressively, about a length and a half better than everybody else. Should be sitting off the lead. It can keep pace with that six horse. Might be able to go wire to wire or at least co-pilot to wire. And does have a seven-point advantage over, hey, what's up? And that one has a 10-point advantage over Harrison C. So this one kind of grades down. So maybe a one with the four and then seven, six, two as your trifecta. Terry, what do you think? Well, I actually like the five Marine Patrol. Takes a big drop in class. Has a trainer wins 33% of the races when dropping a horse down two plus classes. Has a high percentage winning jockey. And then the one utility. He ran uh, second in his last race, uh, the rail post winning 22% clip, and he has the highest last race speed rating. Hey, what's up? The four is my third choice. The trainer wins 31% of the uh, time he had in the first route race, the horse he trains competes in, and he may improve at the longer distance. And then love is forever is my uh, long shot, the number six horse. He could improve while returning to a route. Here's the Don Johnson pick four. I'm going to play the one, four, five, six with the one, two, three, with the five, six, with the two, four, six, nine, and it's a $48 uh, cost. I'm going to go with the one horse utility as my top choice in here, Mr. Terry. Utility ran the top last race speed figure 15 points, better than the next closest one. And it's up the speed figure in the two races after its debut, going to drop in class just like so many others. And, I mean, all the horse has to do is maintain, regress a little bit, any move forward, and the one horse could be bye-bye to the rest of this group. Number four, hey, what's up? That might be what's yelling from 12 lengths behind. But anyway, so far, only two races, so maybe there's some hidden potential. Does have a workout in between, so the horse could be a bit more fit today. Number five, Marine Patrol. As you mentioned, Terry, this one is the biggest class dropper and has a lot of okay works prepping for today. And then finally, number six, Love is Forever. Potentially, with that 11-point or big early race speed advantage, could get to the lead, control the pace, and as long as the fractions are reasonable, might be able to steal this one going wire to wire. Let's move off to race number three in this 11 race car, Terry. Big one today on hump day. It's a bonus day because normally only do parks Monday and Tuesday with a bonus race, the 11th race. But what's happening in the third race? All right. We're going to stretch out a little bit to a mile and 70 yards. It's a maiden claiming race, $25,000 claiming price per 26000 for maidens, fillies, and mares, three-year-olds and upward. So that extra 70 yards, what impact does it have, Terry? It, it still favors stalkers. And it's still a bunch of them go wire to wire. The big difference is the rail is really bad on this case. So Miss Cinnamon really might struggle. Two and three, there is a good bonus. Four through seven get discounted. Eight and out is uh, the fair place to be, Terry. So we're looking at, once again, for some speed, preferably more in than out. What do you think? What do you well, we, we do have some Speed in, it's the two shows that most speed uh, with the three and the one uh, coming up with a little bit also. But the one has a very small overlay from five to two to three to one. The four has an overlay from, well, six to five to four to one. The four and the one are the only par plus numbers. And all but the two get some kind of a C zone numbers. And most of them are pretty decent. Mm -hmm. Yep, indeed. So, again, if you're joining us for the first time, par plus means when we did our 10,000 simulations, the one, a 12% chance, the four, a 27% chance to run a speed figure of at least 74 or more. So let's see if indeed they can do that. Pace and trip handicapping. All these horses want to be middle back. Again, this shape tells me keep an eye out for horses that can get to the front. So far, the six horse, me so lucky, hasn't been lucky at all. Not within five lengths of the winner when the race is done. Early on, problems abound. Speed horse, a closer that moves forward. That's what we call a left arrow horse around here. Right behind it should be the one horse. So the two inside horses getting a lead, probably a length, a length and a half over everybody else. They just have to be careful that they don't smoke each other out before the end of the race. Late speed belongs to the number four intro, uh, about almost a little bit close to like a length and three quarters at the end quicker. Our top total pace horse here is Miss Cinnamon, four points clear of problems abound few points ahead of intro. So once again, they just kind of ratchet down a little bit by a little bit. Maybe uh, go out there and do one of those bets where you pick the six horses in a row. 
and just line them up like this, Terry. <laughs> yep. Well, I like the one horse, Miss Cinnamon. She has finished in the money in seven of her nine career races, which is pretty good. Shows she's very competitive. She's finishing third on her uh, last race and has a high percentage winning trainer. This trainer wins 26% of the races when taking a horse from a sprint to a sprint to a route and switches to a high percentage winning jockey. And the combination of the trainer jockey in the last uh, 14 days have won four out of four starts, so they've been perfect. Number two, problems abound. My second choice came in from Penn National and finished third in her last race at Parks Racing and has a high pers- has a trainer who wins 27% of the races in the second route race he has a horse run in. And then three, my forever friend is my third choice. Ran second versus similar in her last race, and she has a high percentage winning jockey, Nurse Carolyn. Uh, the five is my uh, long shot. Finished in the money in three of her last four races which is to a high percentage winning trainer and this trainer wins 25 percent of the races in the first race after claiming a horse uh just the normal bets in this race for me no additional bets yeah i'm going to also begin with miss cinnamon despite the bad post position this horse making the classic third start after a layoff does have room to improve and uh, we saw one of those par plus horses in here my forever friend did run the top last race speed figure three points clear the next closest horse that's the barometer that we're looking for and that race also was actually better than par for this level yeah my question with this one is making its second start after a layoff and the resume is about 50 50 sometimes goes forward sometimes goes backwards so we're hoping for the go forward version today intro the four horse strongest par plus score that we see in the field here terry and the biggest class dropper which if you go through your race notes at the end of the day for the horses that won you're going to see class drop, class drop, class drop, class drop, class drop. Like when you're in high school or like middle school or whenever you get in trouble and you had to write something on the chalkboard a thousand times. Yeah. Only question for me is this one's been off since August. Some decent work, so maybe some rust to shake off. And then problems abound. Sounds like my daily life. But this one has had no problem finding the board. Three for three in the money. Always really well bet. And uh, maybe this one could improve in the second start at a longer distance or a route. We have what about, are they lining up yet, Terry? Uh, we have zero yes. minutes according to this. Yeah, they're going in the gate. So before we do that, today's free track is Will Rogers, the wild, wild west over at Guaranteed Tip Sheet. There is a link down in the description below. So kindly make sure you head on over there for that. Of course, this week, Keeneland opens. We'll have our opening day picks on Keeneland for Friday. And on Saturday, we will have our Toyota Bluegrass Stakes wagering guide. So you're going to want to make sure you get all of that. Again, that's a guaranteed tip sheet. There is a link down in the description below, and they are having a hard time getting that seven horse to get into the gate, Terry. He says, you know what? It's Terry's top pick. It's his birthday. I'm going to make him wait. A little bit of anticipation. Yeah. Now that's the six horse that doesn't want to go in, so... Never mind. The gatekeeper is not interested in going into the gate. Okay. There comes the seven horse now. And then we'll hear Jessica Paquette. No, the seven horse. Yeah, here you go. Yeah, the seven horse is just strolling right on there. He's got, I got you, Terry. All right. And then right now, the one horse is your favorite. That one is a one to one, getting bet down from five to two. And they're off and running. They all broke kind of sharply. The one horse got the lead as we kind of expected on the rail. The two horses trying to squeeze up the threes in there. The five is running one, two, three, four, five wide, as is the seven. You got the four to the inside of the seven, and way, way back is the gatekeeper who was reluctant to load. Uh, they're going through the opening turn. The one horse continues to hold the lead. The two horse in between it and the five and the one. You have the seven horse now pulling into contention. Uh, bringing along with it the three and the four. They strolled through the opening quarter in 24.1 seconds, so pretty pretty fair pace right now for Parks on the sloppy track. One horse continues to battle the five up front. The two horse is ranging in two range. The seven horse getting to the tail. And there's a pretty good gap all the way back to the three horses. That one's going backwards, as is the four. The six horse, the gatekeeper, starting to get in contention. If you're backing the four or the other horse, I don't know which one that is, you're done. The one horse continues to set the pace. The jockey really hasn't asked for him to go yet. The, one, the five horse 
is trucking along in second. They come through the turn, and away they go. The five horse looks like it has a jump on the one, although the one does have the inside rail. You got the two horse coming up aggressively here on the outside, Terry. It looks like that one could be, I don't know, the one horse is coming back on the rail. The seven horse, I think, is going to get the job done for you way wide, Terry, on the outside, although the two horse is going to make it difficult, as is the one. What the hell kind of race is this, Terry? <laughs> It's, it looks like I don't know. I'm gonna go one, two, seven. I think maybe. So at least you got the trifecta, Terry. Yeah. To get started. I I I don't think the seven one, but it was way outside. So really tough to tell what the picture looks like there. That was a crazy run from the one. Yeah. Well, I think he tried to stay off that rail because it was probably pretty sloppy by that he, rail. He kept pushing him down. Yeah, he took him way wide, most of them. So. Yeah, the, and the seven, you know, kind of bared out a little bit coming down the stretch, so that might have hurt him. Well, I think what happened was the one finally switched leads late. Yeah. And then got himself. Oh, I don't know. That seven might have got him. It's tough to tell. It the... is. So. Uh, it's going to be close, I think. Seven's on the outside, so it's either going to go seven, one, two, or two, one, seven, two. I hope it's seven one two. No offense. <laughs> That'd be a good birthday present. Well, we'll find out if you get. I mean, on your birthday, you should get the head bob, right? Yeah, that's right. Yeah. And who are they going to show? And time keeps ticking, ticking, ticking into the future. Maybe the two might. So they got seven one two. There seven. you go. Yeah, seven got it. Yeah. Terry getting the head bob. Well, there you go. It's your birthday. You should get it. All right. Head. Nine to two, too. That's a nice price. Did he go up at 92? Yeah, he went up 92. Good morning, Umet. How are you today? Good to see you. All right. Let's go off to what are we on? Race number four now, Terry? Yes, we certainly are. Let's head to race number four. Take All us right. away. Yeah, they, we're going to shorten up to six furlongs, and it's a maiden race, $40,000 purse. For registered Pennsylvania maidens, fillies, and mares, three-year-olds and upward. And indeed, and Umet, Christopher, happy birthday. That means, Terry, I mean, Christopher, that means you got to pick a horse in your head up that you just think has no chance today, my friend. Thanks, Christopher. Yeah, but we don't really do that around here. All right, so this is a maiden race, Terry. There are a results from yesterday. I don't, Terry, did your, how did your best bet do yesterday? I, I you, didn't, I didn't get there at all so and, and christopher I, I don't remember pick what of the day at one right if i remember correctly yeah i think that's the one i had too right is on top he, he might have run second but i'm not sure uh christopher I let us know i don't remember and then umet wishing terry happy birthday too so if oh, you want to wish you. terry a happy birthday or you want to make a pick challenge terry to a head up head up on a horse racing selection go right ahead and do that we'd appreciate it because this is a maiden race, half the field hasn't run yet, Terry. The other ones, maybe one or two races. The data is sort of meaningless. Real quick, for those horses that have run, you can see here, one, two, five, seven, only the six has any experience. So it doesn't really matter what the statistics say, Terry. We just straight up handicap this one, so fire away. All right. Well, the five and the nine. Oh, that's here. I'm, I'm goofing up here. Let me get back here. Okay. You got some more birthday wishes from Jimmy yeah, Little. There, there, there really isn't anything, so I can fire away, isn't there? All mm. right. So the <laughs> so Didn't we're on make the your picks, race. my man. Yeah, I know. I get too excited about that first win. Anyway, uh, this is uh, the fourth race, and it's uh, number six, confirmed star. That's my first choice. Finished third versus similar uh, in her last race. Has a high percentage winning trainer and wins twenty three percent of the spe maiden special weight races. He has a horse running in, and she has a high percentage winning jockey. The five Chit Chat Chub. Uh, is my next one. It's first time starter whose dam has three winners from three starters, and one of those was a stakes winner. And the breeding suits today sprints district. See you all at the hop. Uh, is my third choice seven? She's then, I mean, being that you've been here three quarters of a century, you that was something you said somebody like when you're in your teens. We'll see you at the sock hop, right? That's right. Did and you ever sock have, hop? I don't even know what what is what is a sock hop. Well, you take your shoes off and you just have your socks on. And that's how you dance. So you dance like the bop and that sort of thing. So, mm. yeah. 
Anyway, see the bop? I, I've never seen a bop. It's your birthday. Can you bop for us? Oh no, I'm I'm too old to bop anymore. So, <laughs> but I used to bop a lot. I'll tell you that you were you were a lot of bopper, similar uh, to the similar to the uh, jitterbug. So yeah, I haven't done that one either. Could you try yeah. that one for us? But anyway, I'm sorry. No, sorry to interrupt your picks. Go ahead. Anyway, she's a see you at the hop is a first time starter as well. And her trainer went 17% of the main special rates that he has a horse competing in. And then Warriors Treasure is my long shot, the one, another first time starter whose dam has four winners from four starters, one stakes winner. And the breeding, of course, suits today's distance. I'm going to play a 50 cent pick four. I'm going to use the five six with the two four six nine with the one two six seven with the one three eight forty eight dollar ticket. I think the six horse runs away with this race, Mr. Terry. It should. I mean, that's the way it really breaks down. It's got some nice workouts prepping for a comeback. So I, I, I it's hard to find a way that anybody beats him. But of all the, I mean, it just should. It's got a race under its belt. Was a decent one. Number one, Warriors Treasure, your long shots. My second pick in here, Terry. Mama makes winner, does have some bullet workouts. The trainer wins at 14% with first timers. The only negative is it's coming in from Penn National, but it hasn't run there yet. So it hasn't been jinxed yet. Number five, Chit Chat Chub, an alliteration horse. The breeding is there. The workouts are there. But the trainer, eh, yeah, only wins at 4% with first-time starters. That's really not a good enough number for me. I'm not going to bet against 96%. And then my brown-eyed girl. Longest shot on the board here, Terry. It's another firster. Does have some decent works. Does have some decent breeding. I'm going to do a pick four as well. My top two. Then in the next race, my top four. Then my top three. And my top two. What does that work out to be? 24 bucks or something like that? Yeah, I think so, yeah. Any, yeah, anyway, yesterday my pick of the day ran third. The, uh, let's see, the cause I said won the race, uh, the hard favorite. And then the courage ran second. I think that's the horse that... Uh, that mm -hmm. Christopher had, but I'm not sure. If I remember correctly, that was yeah. And I want to say thank you to Phillips for wishing me a happy birthday, and thanks Don Johnson uh, for congratulating me on my uh, cold uh, try. And good morning, Melvin. And here's Melvin's picks. His pick four is uh, he likes the one four six with the three six with the one two five with the nine six three. I guess. Well, I think one, two, five, nine, and then six, three. Oh, that's right. Then six, three. Yeah. Yeah. I um. I think we're going to move off the race number five now, right? Yes, that's what we're going to do. So, uh, race five is uh, seven for seven, seven for longs. Optional claiming sixteen thousand dollar claiming price twenty five thousand dollar purse for fillies and mares three year olds and upward which have started for 16,000 or less and which have never won two races or claiming price of 16,000 or which have never won two races yeah and, and typically this is the distance where speed is the least advantageous only 14 percent go wire to wire but you still want to be forwardly placed there's a real bonus it won't be ever hard it'll be snow lake that should get that edge two and three that's really the best place to be four through seven they get discounted eight and out so far. Ooh, they've been bad, Terry. And we only have a seven horse field with the two scratches. So that really doesn't come in to play. The speed of the speed is out of this race. So that opens the door for a couple of others to take charge. Yeah, the five and the nine show the most uh, most speed along with the six with a little bit of speed. They should maybe go head to head. The five shows an overlay from about seven to five to six to one. The five and eight have the only part plus numbers and all but the four show some kind of a C zone number. Mm -hmm. Trip handicapping. For race number five, the nine horse, Fancy Warrior, could be a lone E. You can get to the lead. Confidence grows. Could take them from the gate to the wire. Again, that only happens 14% of the time, but that one does look like it should have an early step. And really, only the three and the five, maybe the two to its inside to really give that horse a hard time. As they're coming down the stretch, Divine Romance has about a length and a quarter lead over everybody else. So we'll be coming the hardest at the end. Angelic Storm, that one will be coming too, but that one's probably way in the back of the pack as they get started. 
And then finally, Divine Romance, that six horse is your top total pace horse. But you got three of them basically in a tie, the five, the six, and the nine. That is your total pace trifecta. Terry, what is your top pick? I like the nine, uh, Fancy Warrior. Warrior. Uh, she ran second versus similar in last race and has a high percentage winning jockey and trainer. Snow Lake, the two, is my uh, second choice. She won her last race at Parks Racing. Divine Romance, the sixth, third choice, ran second versus similar in her last race. Has a high percentage winning trainer and switches a high percentage winning jockey. Sweetest Moment, the four, is my long shot. She won her last race at Parks Racing, and she has a high percentage winning trainer. Just the normal bets uh, for me in this race. Five, three, six for Christopher D'Souza in race number cinco, or fünf, if you speak German. I don't know. All you got to do is say things like you're angry and that you'll sound like you're speaking German. I know that because my family all came from there. And that's what it sounded like to me as a little kid. Like, why is everybody so mad all the time? <laughs> I got the six horse Terry is my top pick that one will be coming at the end unquestionably and getting some additional distance today I think will work to its benefit as will a workout in between races to sharpen the saw number nine fancy warrior your top choice gets the second call for me last time out second by a head at this level better fractions at seven furlongs than when it ran at six furlongs Angelic Storm, the other horse that's going to be charging at the end, Terry, is a class and track dropper. Absolutely has the most late or I don't like to say late race, but back race ability and uh, some good workouts getting ready for today. And then true phenomenon. There is a green goal horse right there, Mr. Terry, likely front runner, strong C zone, good chance to be on the lead, especially with the one out and your top par plus with. The simulation odds. Maybe I should move that one to the front of my picks. Race Masters, how are you doing today, my friend? Race 11. Race 11. I think one, four, race one. three. Race race one? One, yeah. You like the one in race one, maybe? I mean, it's tough to tell. Let's go with race three because we know that one's still coming. He's got the one and the four. Or no, that holy hit. race one, the one, race two, I see. One, four, race three, I'm getting it now. All right, so screenshot that, everybody, so I don't confuse the hell out of you, and uh, you'll actually know what Race Masters is saying while I try to use my dyslexia to really mess everybody up. Let's move off to race number six, Terry. One step forward and a long card today, a marathon card. That's right, and we're going to stretch out to a mile and 70 yards. Again, it's an allowance race, $41,000 purse for registered Pennsylvania Phillies and mares, three-year-olds and upwards, which have never won a Pennsylvania restricted race other than maiden claiming or starter. On Monday, I gave you, you gave in your recommendations. Well, thanks. Well, hopefully you won some good stuff, my man. We appreciate that. Yesterday, I had a you know pretty inexpensive pick four to pay 227 bucks in that middle pick four, so... I want to say thanks to Don Johnson for motivating us to go out there and do those pick fours. If there's anything you want us to do too, and there's a lot of different things on the show that are the way they are because of suggestions from folks who join us every single day. So if there's anything you'd like to see us add, subtract uh, to enhance the show, let us know. Man, more winning picks would be my first <laughs> suggestion. <laughs> At a buck 70, uh, you're looking for horses that have early speed again, 42%. So, Hey, was that Ricky Bell? Is that a 42? They go wire to wire. The rail's been bad, so Chapa might not do as well as it wants. Two and three get a bonus. Four through seven get discount. Eight and out are fair. Mr. Terry, once again, we have a need for speed, and who has it? That rail horse, the one, has the most speed in here, although there's two or three others that have some speed. The one also shows a nice overlay from three to five to about uh, five to one, I believe, believe that is. And then uh, the one shows the only par plus number in here. And then the one uh, should get, I think, should get to that quarter pole first. It'd probably lead the whole race. Anyway, all of uh, all of them have some kind of a C-zone number. Yeah. Can the one get to the front? It is an e-horse in there, Terry. You got a couple back here with some versatility. So everybody likely wants to be middle forward. Speed could be important, but go too fast could be a dangerous. Chapa will be up front about a length quicker than the horse to its outside, dancing on my own, which is something we tried to encourage Terry to do on his birthday today, to do the bop or the jitterbug, but he refused. <laughs> Our late speed number here is going to be uh, also Chapa, so it could be tough to pass what you can't catch. Terry, 
that means it should easily have the top total pace. It does eight points higher than creative copy, which should be sitting around second or third and then try to come home. All right, Terry, uh, we both think that one's going to win, though. I have some reservations. Yeah, I like the one Chapa. She's never finished out of the money in her career and finished second versus Sim in her last race. Her best dirt speed is fast among today's starters. She has a high percentage winning jockey and trainer. All those boxes marked off. Six is my second choice, ran second in her last race and has a high percentage winning trainer. Mary's Reward, the seven, is my third choice, finished in the money in two out of the last three races, and she has a high percentage winning jockey. And then uh, two, Dancing on My Own is my long shot. She finished in the money in six races at Parks Racing, winning two of those starts, and she has a high percentage winning trainer. Because we have 11 races, we have an additional pick four today. And so I'm going to play uh, a pick four starting this race, 50 cent for Don Johnson, one, two, six, seven with the one, three, with the one, three, eight, nine, with the two, five, eight. That's a $48 ticket. Yeah, we have a $50 budget on our pick four. So we try to keep them, uh, you know, uh, manageable. Is the word I'm looking for as I struggle to find it in my cranium. I think the one horse two Terry Chapa, you got all those numbers up here should get to the lead top total pace, top late speed can be difficult to catch it, but here's the big negative. It comes from Penn. Eesh, they don't perform as well. Usually at parks, creative copy. The five horse is my next call in here. A repeat of her last race would be more than good enough to catch her the W here. But it's taken a pretty big move up in class, and that's why I did not move it in front of the one. Number six, Griffin's Wings, or Griffin's Wings, just definitely running at the proper distance for this horse. Four times, two wins and a second. You put the horse at any other distance, you take that 70 yards away, man, or you add another 70 to make it a mile and a 16th or any whatever else. Seven times out, only one second. Finally, I'm going to go with – you have to have this one in your picks today, Terry. Happy birthday, <laughs> Corey. I mean, it doesn't say I, Terry. Yeah, I should I should have. Huh? Yeah. Yes. Improved its early pace last time out through the first half of a mile. And that's usually an indication of a horse that is – on the upswing in terms of fitness. Plus, it's Terry's birthday. Did we mention that? Yeah, you have several times. <laughs> yes. Well, we want to make sure you get your love today, Terry, right? It's yep. the day the Lord hath made for you, my friend. That's when you came into this great place. Race number six, the five to win, creative copy for Christopher D'Souza. Race seven, as we power our way through this card, Terry, the best we can. All right, what are we looking at here? Now we're going to go to this odd uh, distance, six and a half furlongs. It's a $5,000 claiming race. It's $18,000 purse for three-year-olds and upwards, which have not won a race since October 3rd. I am assuming that's 2022. 30, I mean, 23. Well, one, it's one year in 2023. Yeah. 23. Yeah, it's so, sometime in one year when they had that October 23rd date. All right. Let's talk a little bit about this odd distance and what does it mean in terms of your – Running style that usually gets to the winner circle. Stalkers do good, but one out of four go wire to wire. Really strong rail bias for indirectly. And overall, the post positions favor the inside horses over the outside horses. So we're looking for inside speed in lucky race number seven. That's loaded with a bunch of horses and plenty of them with some early gas. Yeah, most of them have some kind of speed, but the 745 show the most speed. So you really... Don't know who's going to get there. It's anyone's real guess. And then the one has an overlay from about uh, three to five to three to one. And then the uh, one has the only par plus number. Uh, and then all but the two and eight show pretty decent uh, C zones. Again, C zone representing how comfortable the horse will be with our projected pace today. How likely it will mirror or match their best performances. And par plus tells you that this horse, the one horse, indirectly with a 22.3% chance to run a speed figure of 82 or higher. The only horse in the field in our 10,000 simulations that even scored one of them, Terry. Um, looking at the trip no, a trip handicapping, a pretty balanced race here. You got four that want to be pilot or co-pilot, five. You got four that want to close and one that just doesn't want to be here today, as lucky as seven, which probably should be lucky as 13. Early on, you're 
Speed horse looks like Spinora creative again indirectly. A little bit of a left arrow horse action for indirectly in there, Terry. That left arrow also has the most late speed, so indirectly should be forward today. Still has that closer's punch, and as a result, it too scores out as your top total pace horse. Ten points clear of Catch My Vibe, man. So that one should be one that you can uh, center your bets around today. Terry, what did you do? I like the one direct, the indirectly. He drops in class today. The rail post win in 22% clip. Switches to high percentage winning jockey and has a high percentage winning trainer. The three is my second choice. Ran second in her in his last uh, two starts as a trainer who wins 14% of the claiming races. He has a horse competing in. And then uh, catch my vibe. He finished third versus similar in his last race and has a high percentage winning trainer. That's my third choice. My long shots to seven finished third versus similar in his last race. As a trainer, wins 18% of the claiming races he has a horse competing in and has a, a high percentage winning jockey just by normal bets in this race. Yeah, indirectly, again, looks like you know it could be a good day for the one horses as long as they don't get nosed out at the wire constantly today. But it is that top total pace horse, 10 points clear of everybody else. Just needs to run back to his last time he ran at Parks, and uh, that should be good enough. And last time out, the fractions were faster. So a lot of reasons to back that one. Por su, por su puesto. There we go. The three horse in there. Terry does have a pair of seconds in his last two, both of which were at this level, but they were well beaten in both. Sapanara, the seven horse. It maybe noses out the one here again. Held its speed longer in that last race, Terry, which is usually a sign again of a horse that's getting in better shape. Does have a maintenance workout to improve the stamina this time. So I'm expecting a more fit version. A Sapanora here. Finally, Monstradamus. I'm going to take a little bit of a flyer here with this 12 to 1 shot. Terry, Monstradamus last time is uh, dropping in class from that last race. Did show in its first race after a layoff some really good early fractions. Does have a solid workout in between. So I think you're going to see the horse, instead of speed and fade, speed with more stamina, especially with room to improve in the second start after a layoff. Do we have time to do race number we eight? We have uh, two, two minutes. Think that's enough time? We can go fast. All right, let's do it. Okay, so it's uh, this race here is a six and a half furlong race, optional claiming uh, price of $16,000, $30,000 purse for three year olds and upwards, which has started for a claiming price of $8,000 or less since April 3rd, 2022, or claiming price of $16,000 going to be hard to get it done if they put that much conditions in there. Again, six and a half furlongs. You're looking for some horses on the inside with some speed, Terry. Let us know which ones they are. All right. So we've got uh, in that inside there, we've got that one that shows some speed. And we also have the outside horse, the nine. Uh, and then the one has an overlay from two to one to, to nine to two. The three has an overlay from about three, almost three to one, four to one. The one, three, and nine show the best uh, or the only uh, par plus numbers, and all of them show some kind of a C zone number. And our trip handicapping points to us that it's a very, I mean, a perfectly balanced race. So you got two in the middle with a lot of versatility with the seven and the eight. As the gates open, the speed will belong to the nine horse diesel on the outside. Traders look to the inside, so the nine might have to hustle a little bit because. All the other speeds to its inside. You've got to be careful not to go too fast. If they do go too fast, Hot Pot will be the one that could take advantage late with about a two-length advantage over everybody else. And the late speed, Diesel is your top total pace horse, but only three points clear of the three, eight, and one. Maybe the seven and six don't belong. Terry, quickly, who do you got? I like number nine, Diesel. He won his last race by seven lengths at Parks Racing. Has a highest last speed rating and a high percentage winning trainer. Hot Pot, the three, is my second choice. Won three out of the last four starts, finishing third in his last race. Has a high percentage winning trainer. The trader's luck, the one. Finished uh, in the money in six of the last seven races, winning three of the starts, and finished second in the last race. Has a high percentage winning trainer and jockey. The eight, Iconic Le Legacy, is my long shot. Finished third in his last race. and has a high percentage winning uh, figure at, at today's distance and the uh, last pick four one three eight nine two five eight with the four five with the two three eleven fourteen. I'm going to begin with the one horse Terry. I think it gets the edge on the nine when the race gets started. 
has that strongest par plus in the field or tied for one of them in there. Likely pace setter with a strong rail edge and did run some better fractions at six and a half furlongs versus six furlongs. Third up, drops in class, the most back class. Number nine, Diesel. Did run the best speed figure, 10 points clear of anybody else, but taking a real big step up in class. Interestingly, not in for a price. The owner and the trainer are the same. The horse has been gelded. So I think they probably um, want to win this race, Terry, and they think the horse has some upside. Hot Pot, the three horse, runs his best when Dexter Haddock rides him. Five wins and two-fourths in seven mounts. In the other three mounts in the last 10, with somebody else rode him, not even remotely close to being on the board. And then Iconic Legacy, your eight horse is my final choice here too, Terry. Going to be better second off the sideline. Does have a strong workout between races. One, three, nine, singling the eight, then five, six, and going all in the back leg. And believe it or not, that only cost 18 bucks. All right. So it is a hot dog pick four with an all in there. All right. It's kind of hard to do. I like all in the last leg always. Yeah. Well, only when you get to it. Yeah. Right. Race nine, and you know what's going to happen, right? Like yeah. there'll be a horse that goes off at three to five, and it'll it, win by it'll like win. eighty-eight lengths. <laughs> Race number eight, the seven's going to win for Christopher D'Souza with the three-six. Race number two, they're about to get cracking. So let's see what we got cooking here, Mister Terry. Right now. In race number two, the one horse has been bet down to your three to five favorite. That's the single in my pick four. So better come home the winner, Terry, because I went a pretty much hot dog all day with my pick fours. All right. Yeah, it looks like I got a 15 to one shot in here. <laughs> with the uh, four, five, five and six. Marine Patrol. Mm -hmm. And the four horses, four to one. Six horses, nine to two. And they're about ready to run race number two. So let's see what's cooking when the gates open and they, uh, Jessica Paquette turns on her microphone. All right. Are they waiting for any? I think they're waiting for the seven horse to go in again. It wants to be difficult. And that the track looks like it's muddy to me, not sloppy. Yeah, I think it started out sloppy, but now I think it's muddy. Has they Have they upgraded it to muddy? Um. Yeah, Harrison C is not interested in running right now. He's like, uh, 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 uh. It's to me, animals are funny. No, they, they, they have their own minds. They do what they want to do, right? Yeah, it says is still says it's uh, sloppy here, but seven's like not. I'm not interested in going in there. There's nothing you can do. It's funny how they just get like firm. And you can't push them, right? Yeah, there, there he goes. Yeah, he's still not, he's still like, man, I'm not going in there. What's interesting to me is that the people get behind the horse. And yeah. like, when you get to the track, the first thing that people at the track tell you is never walk behind the horse. Right. <laughs> in case they kick. That horse does not want to go in there. Yeah, they could, they could scratch that horse if they don't. I think they've, I think they've finally free. coaxed it in there. All right. Yeah, I think they're going to get that gate closed, and they might hold its tail so that it doesn't get um, – well, they're not holding its tail, so that's not going to hurt his break at all. So the starter, the assistant starter is up with the seven, and they're off and running. And the seven, despite its reluctance to load, he's off to a decent start, but he is pretty far up the track, maybe six wide. Mm. The one and the four are competing for the early lead. I'm not so sure I like the way the one horse is running. His head's all to the side. Jockey's trying to get that horse under control, so he's relinquished the lead to the four horse, which is now your front runner. I, I think the one horse, Terry, I don't know what it's doing, but I don't know if the jockey can get him straightened out or not. But if not, the four horse is your leader right now. The opening quarter in a slow 25 seconds behind the four horse is the six horse. That one right now is 92. And then the seven at 17 to one. And third, the one horse kind of trucking along there. Still not really getting involved at that short price. So my pick four could be over at the beginning of that race, my friend. Yeah. Here comes the four horse continuing to have the lead. The six horse is now also engaging, trying to move up to the outside. Seven horse continues to remain in third. And it looks like to me at this moment, Terry, it's a two horse race between the four and the six. The four continues to hold that lead. Hey, what's up? I think it's going to be, hey, what's up, is going to be a wire-to-wire -wire winner here, Terry, on 
this race with the six oh, horse right. remaining in third. Let's see if maybe the one horse can get himself up in the third. I don't think so. I think the seven is going to actually go by. The seven might go by them all. The one that didn't want to load, that was reluctant to get in the <laughs> gates, he's coming up on the inside. The question is, can the four hurt him and keep him in uh, second? I think he's going to do that, Terry. But, yep, it's going to go four, then seven, and then now the one wants to run. So four, seven, one, five. Four, seven, one, five. So, of course, my pick four gets blown up with the very next pick, despite the fact that I had money left over. Terry, you're still alive. With yeah, I am. Yeah, that's cool. And, and that one went off at 92. So take all the 92 horses today, apparently. That's right. That sound good, sounds good to me. Yeah, my five got a terrible break. That's uh... Yeah, it didn't get involved at all there. The one horse, I mean, not the one horse, I don't know, when you came out of the gate, you could see that the, maybe – he doesn't like the slop he, or the mud. He, he just does it. He, he's running really funny. So, well, he came out with his head to the side, like if, yeah. like maybe the the bit was too tight or hurt his mouth or something along those lines, right? Yeah. Ching 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 ching. Four four four. You only got to put three fours in there, Melvin, because I learned from the young lady who works the window at McDonald's that three fours means an angel. I did not know that she had a tattoo behind her neck, and I asked her what it was, and she mentioned it has something to do with angels. Hmm. I don't know. All right. Race 9, 10, and 11, the final three. Terry, yeah. what are the conditions for the first leg of the late pick three? All right. It's uh, five and a half furlongs, claiming race, $5,000 claiming price, purse 18000 for three-year-olds and upward, which have not won a race since October 3rd. And at five and a half furlongs, as one might imagine, you better be blistering quick because a bunch, 56%. Lawrence Taylor, right? LT, you got the crazy LT. Go wire to wire. None have won from the rail. So refund Wriggler. Uh, you might need a refund if you bet that one. Two and three. Um, they ever had two, Terry. Four and out. The farther from the rail, the better off you are. So if you're from away from the rail and you have some speed and your mouse actually worked, you might. What the hell happened? To my, did I turn it off? My mouse just went blank, Terry. There it goes. I don't know right. what the story was with that. Did I do something to my... I don't know. Let me see if I can use my finger. That I'm not used to using this, Terry. <laughs> Tell us where the uh, outside speed is in race number nine. Well, the two in the inside shows the most speed, although the uh, seven on the outside... Are we, are we on the right race here? No, oh, I'm on race two. Yeah. Again, I'm not so good with the, uh, the finger mouse. Yeah. Okay. Bang. There we go. All right. So the two shows the most speed, as you see, and a lot of speed. There the eight uh, on the out, I mean, the 10 on the outside shows a little bit. There's a couple of horses in the middle that show some speed. The eight also shows the uh, pretty good uh, overlay. It goes from about three to five to four to one. Uh, eight has the most or the best uh, par plus number followed up by the five. And then all but the nine shows some kind of a C zone number. So indeed, um, our mouse is working again. I don't know why it decided to take a little bit of time off there in race number nine. All these horses want to be on the front, Terry. That could really be beneficial for the 10 and the eight. It's going to be a wall of speed here. The early speed, you have the three, the two, the six, the five. They're all pretty quick. The one horse refund regular should be in that mix too. Everybody else, you know, all within 10 points of each other, two lengths. That means a misstep wide trip could be the difference between being first and last. Late speed belongs to Star Weaver, the eight horse. That one's got a 15-point edge over everybody else. So just looking at this on paper from a pace standpoint, this race should set up just about perfectly for the eight horse. Can be patient, let everybody tire out, and then use those late legs to go by. Does have a 10-point total pace advantage over the rest of the field, Terry. So from what we've seen so far today, this looks to me like the horse that's going to get the best trip for its running style, and I think we both see it as the winner. Yes, I do. I like the eight-star Weaver. He ran second versus Simmer in his last race at Parks Racing. Likes his distance. He's finished 77% of the time in the money at today's distance, winning 31 of percent of those starts and then the uh two J jw sticky mischief 
Uh, my second choice, he takes a big drop in class. Uh, best bird speed is fastest monk today. Starters tied with another horse, and he has a high percentage winning trainer and jockey. The five, my third choice, ran second versus similar in his last race and has the highest speed figure at today's distance. Rejected again. The six is my uh, long shot drops in class today and has the best dirt speed uh, about among the today's starters. He's tied with the horse above that I re referred to. My only bets are my normal, the normal bets that we do in this race. So yeah, if, I mean, to me, just looking at the way this race sets up, Star Weaver should get an absolutely perfect trip for its running style sits behind all that speed maybe a half a length length off the speed and then has that 15 point late pace edge just to run by and perhaps win with ease so it just ruined that horse's chances of ever winning again lazaredo the five horse this one runs hot or cold here either runs a really good race or a really bad race well last time out it ran a very good race one of the hot ones better across the board with all of its internals, I have my fingers crossed he can do it twice in a row. JW's Tricky Mischief. That one might just have a little bit too much speed. Speed of the speed of the speed. This one's running at the lowest level in a long, long time. But he's nine years old. So it tells me that the owners probably want to sell this one and maybe cash a check, which is concerning to me because he's been out of form and maybe he's just hit the I am ready to retire wall. Could be. And then finally, number 10, Extreme Force. A lot of those fractions were last race were much, much quicker. Absolutely trending in the right direction, speed figure-wise. And I think cutting back in distance today is going to be the key for that long shot. Hitting the board, fattening up my trifecta key box with the eight. Well, not a key box, just trifecta key. The eight over the two, the five, and the ten. So the eight wins, and I need the two, five, or ten to run second and third. Hopefully, they do that for me. Race 10, two to go. <laughs> the first leg of the late double, Terry, they're going to go a mile and 70 yards. Yep, and it's an optional claiming race, a $16,000 claiming price. If you elect to put your horse in there to be claimed. And a $50,000 purse for fillies and mares, three-year-olds and upward, which have never won a race other than a maiden, a claimant, a starter, or a state bred, or which have never won two races or a claiming price of 16000 And also, uh, I'd like to tell uh race master that he likes cactus jack in the ninth unfortunately that horse has been scratched so so maybe next time for cactus jack put that one in your horses to watch list at a buck 70 on the main track you're kind of looking for horses that have a bunch of speed again 42 percent go wire to wire the rail's been bad so kiss me hardy uh, it may not be a winning bet today. Two and three, they do get a little bit of a bonus. Four through seven, a discount. Eight and out, play fair. Speed is, again, key in race number 10. Terry, just as long as it's not on the rail. And it does look like the two horse, in this case, the four, the one that should yep. be in the second position, is the fastest. Yeah, the four shows the most speed, uh, followed up by the one. The five has an overlay of uh, about uh, three to five, four to five to five to two and the eight has a very small overlay from five to one to six to one five shows the best uh par plus number followed up by the eight and the one and then all of them show some kind of c zone numbers with a couple of them being really nice yeah you have the four and the six hookles vivian and turn on the charm being uh horses that should really enjoy the way this race goes pace wise as far as our race trip is concerned the eight's a closer the one and the six, neither one of them are lead dependent, so they can be patient if need be. They have some versatility. And the four and five, they're pretty versatile as well. So you got a race of versatility versus a race of closers. The beginning of the race, Terry, it does look like Coco's Vivienne is more than a length faster than everybody else at the end of the race. Social Lady is a length quicker than Kiss Me Hardy. And Girls from Girl from Outer Space. Um, and then your top total pace horse, and here is Social Lady. Three points clear of Coco's Vivian, um, only five points clear of Kiss Me Hardy. The eight and four could be tailing at the end of the track, although there's only nine points separating top to bottom. Again, get blocked, go wide, tough start could be the difference between winning this race and finishing dead last. Terry, you uh, think this one is worthy of your best bet of the day? 
That's right. It is my best bet of the day. Social lady, the five. She ran second versus him in her last race. Has the highest speed figure at today's distance. Best dirt speed as fast as one today's starters. And has a high percentage winning trainer and jockey. Very uh, few boxes that she doesn't work off. Number four, turn on the charm is my second choice. Won her last race, Parks Racing. And at today's distance, Coca's Vivian, the six, is my... Uh, Third choice, won two out of three career starts, and she has a high percentage winning trainer and jockey. My long shot is Kiss Me Hardy, the one. Finished third versus similar last race at Parks Racing, has a high percentage winning trainer and jockey. And that combination in the last 14 days have been in the money three out of three times and has won two of those starts. So I'm going to play $5 to win on the five and a $2 daily double with the five to the 11 in the 11th race. Yeah, I think the five horse probably is the one to beat Terry, but I'm going to go with the six horse. Coke goes Vivian. I don't think there's any question that this one's going to be the one that tries to get to the lead today, Terry. And the two times that Coke goes Vivian in its three races that it actually got close to the front or had the lead went wire to wire. This one's going to drop in class and not in for a tag. And the workouts are pretty strong. Social Lady did run the best speed figure last time out. It was six points better than everybody else. All the race internals were peak numbers for the horse. The fractions were peak numbers for the horse. That horse looks like a peak race to me, Terry, where that was the best that you'll see from that horse for a bit. And the horse could regress. And if I'm right about that, it could regress a lot. But for Terry's sake, on his birthday, I hope it does not. Number one, Kiss Me Hardy. Much better early fractions last time out as well. Decent workout to increase the late race ability. And then finally, turn on the charm. Repeat of his last race could really steal this one, especially if she can get the lead on the six when the gates open and the mud starts flying. One race left to do on hump day with Hollywood Hay on his birthday. Did we mention today was Terry's birthday? Yep, you did. All right, so race number two. The, the seven horse, they're talking about that jockey. So let's take a look at that jockey. Martinez Franco. No, he's run 18 times this year. He's got uh, at Parks. He's got a, a couple of uh, four four seconds and three thirds. So he's, he's been warming up a little bit. The trainer is a little bit on the cold side. He had one win in, um, I don't know what I just did right there, but one win in 54 races so far in the last year. So that's an interesting thing right there. Race number 10, Christopher D'Souza, 20 bucks to win. Man, he's just ruthless, Terry. It's your birthday, and he's still saying, let's go. He's going to put it on the floor. <laughs> yeah. So let's write that one down. So race number 10, he's got the four. You got the five. I got the six. It's a five-horse field. One of us is likely to have the winner. Anybody else want any of the other horses for some of this action? Yeah, I don't know, but the race master says that I shouldn't pick the five because you said it's unlucky, and he said it's an unlucky number at Parks, so we'll have to see what happens there. It's been unlucky. I mean, it was your top pick yesterday, the five horse, right? It was. It ran third, so. Yeah, so the five sucks at Parks. Yeah. Well, All right. We'll hopefully it does not today. Well, hopefully for you. If there's going to be a day there's an exception, it should be today. Race, and I don't think we have to worry about that one here, right? And we do have a five in here. All right, anyway. Race number 11 for this bonus race on this bonus day at Parks, Terry. What's it all about? We're going to stretch out to a mile and 70 yards of $7,500 claiming race. Purse 21000 for three-year-old and upward, which have never won four races. So in that race, Race Master's going to go with the one. I think we got all the race horses covered in race number 10. There we go. I think someone just needs to go with the eight. Does anybody want the eight? Hands up for somebody who wants the eight. Just hit eight in the comment section. A mile 70, we've talked about it. Speed, 42%. Go wire to wire. The rail stinks, Midnight Cat. Look out for that. But that one's not going to be on the rail. That's going to be, don't invade my space. Good advice. Don't you hate that, like, when you're in line at a restaurant or somebody, and somebody's, like, just standing over your shoulder who you don't know, looking at the menu, and you give them the, like, look back like this, and they don't get the hint? Yeah, yeah. yeah. They're, they're oblivious to it. So Yes, just in another world. Um, maybe they shouldn't illegalize that stuff. Yeah. But um, anyway, so you're looking for some outside, for some speed, Terry, particularly in the middle of the track, if possible. Where do you find the speed in the final race at Parks this week? 
Well, you're going to see that it's out there on that uh, 11 horse. Uh, it's got plenty of speed. And then the two has the next best speed. And then the 11 also shows the only overlay I see it goes from like seven to five to three to one. The 11 and three and uh, 10 all have par numbers. And uh, the 11, 12, 10, and two show uh, the only C zone numbers. So, unfortunately, Race Masters, Twixter's not running today either. So, he's on the sidelines today. Yeah. Taking the day off because he didn't want your best bet to beat Terry's picks today. Speed, Terry, we talked about that. Who's going to be the race shape here? Well, the 11 horse, if he can get to the lead like we projected, could be Loney. Everybody else wants to be middle back with a whole horde of them that want to close. Early on, when this race gets started, the 11 is the quickest, a little bit faster than Don't Invade My Space. Uh, but it, we'll have to clear some horses to its inside, but not that many because the scratches should be in the middle of the pack. So 11 should get the lead. Looking at the late speed, Dream of Blessings, about one length quicker than Large and Warrior's Vendetta, but really minus the uh, – really yeah. – Minus the 12 and the 10. Everybody else kind of in the same ballpark. Well, they're all sort of in the same ballpark. Your top total pace horse is Sensible Gem. Four points clear. Don't invade my space. Then comes Large. Then comes Warriors Vendenta. Again, according to all of the statistics that we're keeping on this data, 72.3% of the time, the winner will come from this top four, Terry. And we both started with the one at the top of the list. Yeah, I like the 11 sensible Jim. He drops in class today, has the highest last speed rating, and his best start speed is fast among today's starters. Dad's on a roll is the number three horse. It's my second choice, ran second versus similar in his last race, has a trainer, wins 18% of the claiming races. He has a horse entered in. Large, the 14, is my third choice, finished third versus similar in his last start. And has the highest speed figure at today's distance, has a high percentage winning trainer and jockey as well. Uh, don't invalidate, invade my space, the two horse, my long shot. He has a high percentage winning trainer and a decent workout on March 16th. Uh, no money left, so I can't make any bets this race. I think 11, sensible Jim, gets to the lead, Terry, and guess what he doesn't do? Doesn't give it up. He's That's in correct. the win. But I think he's in the win and get claimed. Did run the top last race, P figure, dropping in class here. And I think he gets to the lead and stays there. Number five, Warriors Vendetta is a class dropper in here, Terry. With an easy win and a second the last couple of times this horse ran anywhere near this level. Dad's on a roll. We're always on a roll. Very consistent performer that will show up at the end of the race. And then Large really has a good chance to improve in a second start off the bench. I would have liked to see a workout in between races to rank that one higher because it did finish behind Dad's on a roll last time out. So perhaps second up can help it reverse roles. Again, no bets for me either, Mr. Terry. Here are our full picks for the day. Race number one is in the books with the seven-horse winning. Race number two is in the books with the four-horse winning. Terry's alive. He had an ice cold trifecta get started. He has his pick four ready. I single the one like a dummy. I think the one could have a good day. And maybe double ones can finish the day down there. And uh, that's about it, Terry. One final thing again. Friday, opening day at Keeneland. You can get your picks over at Guaranteed Tip Sheet. It's going to be the Toyota Black Bluegrass Stakes. We will have a wagering guide. So back-to-back -back wagering guide weeks for that. All available at Guaranteed Tip Sheet. Along with today's free picks. Will Rogers, Downs, there is a link in the description down below. And Terry, if they haven't done so already, there are a couple of ways they can do to help us out. That's right. You know what? It's my birthday. So if you want to give me a birthday gift and you haven't subscribed to, to YouTube, go ahead and subscribe. Hit the little bell so you get notified with all our programs and go down and, and uh, copy the link at the bottom and share that with your friends and relatives, neighbors, everybody that you can. And uh, also give us thumbs up uh, and uh, likes on uh, all of our social sites, including uh, Facebook, Twitter. Well, I guess it's not Twitter. It's X now. Mm -hmm. <laughs> I'm still saying Twitter, but it's X. Formerly uh, known as Twitter. It's the prince of social sites. Yeah, that's right. And TikTok and uh, Threads, I think it's called, and Instagram at Horse Race, the number two day. 
and uh, have a great day. I hope for my uh, on my birthday, everybody wins and wins big, especially Mr. Terry on his birthday. All right, folks. Well, Terry and I will be back tomorrow. He'll be an entire year older when we return. Uh, he will be able to finally answer the chicken or the egg question. So we're looking forward to that tomorrow when we go over our picks. Sunny, warm Gulfstream Park. Going to be nice, hopefully, to get away from a muddy track for a day again. Thomas and I, for Foreign Friday, we'll do Randwick. We're looking forward to doing that. Uh, so make sure you tune in to Foreign Fridays. We've been hot. I don't know. For those of you that tuned along, uh, that late pick three, I think I had my win. I had the winner in all three races, and I think it paid like 700 bucks for a dollar. So some real big winners there. Hopefully we can follow that up. But the fourth week in a row where Tom and I hit the ball strong in Foreign Fridays. Till then, no matter what you're doing for the rest of this day, Terry's birthday, did we say, we certainly hope that everything you do, everything that you are trying to aspire to be, has God's grace, God's favor, and ends up in the winner's circle. And thank you, Teresa Chambers, for wishing me a happy birthday. Yes, indeed. Happy birthday to you, Mr. Terry. Happy birthday to you. Everybody have a fantastic, muddy hump day with Harry Hay. <laughs> Harry Hay. <laughs> <laughs> I don't even know the dude's name anymore. All right, folks. Enjoy your day. We'll see you tomorrow. Bye-bye.